Did you guys watch the Duke Animals then? It was on, yeah, it was on the background, sort of, you know, watching film at the same time, no different than uh, I'm usually doing. Games like that, I mean, obviously it's, it's fun basketball to watch for, for a lot of people, but as a team that is also, you know, ranked top three, and right, does that make you nervous at all when you're watching another top team get taken down like that? Or? I don't get nervous watching television. I got plenty of things to be nervous about. Watching TV ain't one of them. Does the possibility of taking over as number one raise the stakes at all for you all on Friday, or do you have any feelings about that? No, I mean, I think everybody that, that you know covers college basketball this year continues to say there are no great teams out there. So I guess we, you know, if we were fortunate enough to win, we might be the, the best of the mediocres. I mean according to everybody, so um, I got bigger problems to worry about. Do you think it's something you need to address with the team at all? Or? Uh, if I do, I'll address it, but um, I, I'm just, I think those guys hopefully know me well enough and our coaching staff that um, I don't get caught up in the, uh, the outside world's perception of our team or where we need to uh, answer critics or, or how we deal with praise. I mean, we're all about trying to figure out a way to get better and play better from, from the previous game. So if I feel like there's a need to address it, then, then I'll address it. But at this point, I'm worried more about practice. What's the biggest thing that you want to see your team make an improvement on from Akron to Friday? Um, well, the biggest thing would be our offense. I thought our offense was, uh, was deplorable against Akron, uh, especially in the second half. Thought we took quick shots. Um, you know, we've become a team that when, you know, we get up, you know, we get away from how we practice and how we do things on both ends of the floor. And uh, the sign of a mature team is a 180 from that. And um, we've got a lot of maturing to, to, to go through. Mm, we do. How does a game like last night reiterate your point to your team that, you know, that they have work to do, um, that you know the ranking really doesn't matter, especially when teams like Akron and Stephen F. Austin are coming after you? Um, I, I would hope that our staff can get across to our players without, without having to watch other teams, um, you know, set examples. Uh, if, if, if they felt like in any way, shape, or form after our game against Akron, that, that we're okay or we're doing a good job, then um, I'm doing something wrong. What do you see in Western with Bassey and the supporting cast? I see a really talented team. Uh, I see a team that, um, you know, has a lot of experience on the floor. Uh, you know, Bassey's an NBA player. Um, he should have gone last year. Uh, that would have been very nice. <laughs> um, you know, he's big. He's very skilled. He's got a soft touch. When he gets to the free throw line, um, you know, he converts. And then uh, they've got some guys that, that can really shoot the ball uh, from the three-point line. So it stretches your defense. At the same time, you have such a concern about what he's doing in the interior um, that, you know, offensively, they, they have the makings of a special group. You know, so, you know, Hollingsworth is a very experienced guard uh, at this point in his career. So they've got a lot of Mr. Basketballs on their team from the state. Um, they're going to take a lot of pride in this game, and uh, as we are. So it, it, it's a game where hopefully our, our players, um, you know, we have their, their undivided attention here as we prepare for a really good Western Kentucky team. Steve was saying that a lot of the emphasis on improving defensively has been on better communication. And with the variety of threats that WKU has, I would assume that that's going to be super important. I mean, it's always, it's always important. Um, you know, it's frustrating that, that we aren't better. Um, it's a team communicating. I'm not doing a good enough job uh, to get that point across, or we'd be a louder team on the defensive end, uh, and, and then we wouldn't have as much slippage from practice to, uh, to the game as we've had. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, always a, uh, it's always a concern. And then when you play a, a talented, cohesive offensive unit that the other team presents, it makes your challenge even greater. Do you think the stakes are higher with it being an in-state opponent? Or, you know, 
mean, I don't know what stakes mean. I mean, it just it, it's one game. Um, we, we try to win every game we play, Lucas. Like, I, again, I don't, I don't know what that means. Um, you know, every team has a, a net ranking, an RPI. Um, but I just worry about winning the game. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe I would get yelled at at my lake house a lot, you know, louder because it's right in Western Kentucky. It might be a, you know, a few, um, you know, neighborhoods that would make fun of me or some neighbors that would make fun of me. But um, we're just, we're just trying to get better, and we're playing a really good team on Friday that that we have to be ready for. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't want to be, I don't want to come across, you know, like. Um, dismissive or anything I just the only thing I know is that we're playing a team that's really good and not, we, we worry about the next practice the next practice all the other stuff the extraneous stuff of like them being an in-state or the possibility of becoming number one I don't worry about any of that I, I, I really don't I don't I mean here's what I worry about more in the last 24 hours now this is being probably too real and too serious there was a fraud charge on my visa card last night. It was from Cigars, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I don't know what that means. I never bought a cigar. I don't know if it was like a, um, a mis you know, different name for a parent company, but it, it had a charge on there of $222.75. I called U.S. Bank, and I said, you know, what is the issue? This lady at Janet, she, she does a great job. She told me, um, Coach, that was on your card, not your wife's, because we have a split account. We, we share an account. And I said, I know I didn't do that. And she was like, well, would you like to file a fraud charge? And I'm like, well, I guess, because I just don't want to have it taken out of my account. And so we did that. We have to shut your credit card down, right? So last night on the way home from Laney's basketball game, you know, it's late. It's like 8.30. Did a good job in the scrimmage yesterday, by the way. Um, <laughs> She starts to order DoorDash, right, through my, through my account. And she goes to put in her order for Chick-fil-A, and, you know, we're all going to eat Chick-fil-A, which is really good, by the way. <laughs> they say to her, or they, they say, you know, the phone says, reject it. It's because of my payment information. So then I have to get my credit card while I'm driving. I know that's not safe. And I have to, like, go through my iPhone settings and go to DoorDash and do all this thing and give her the new card. Right, so she puts a whole new card in. Thank heavens we got it right below the time because DoorDash doesn't deliver past like, you know, 10 o'clock and the store closes, but we got it. Well, then I'm sitting there playing practice today and I get an email and it says my iTunes account is now shut down because of this credit card. And so I had to go through my settings. I don't know if you guys have iPhones. It's really difficult. You got to go through your settings. You got to go back and forth. You got to go email. And it was a real hassle. So that's two accounts now that I've had to change credit card information. Now I've gotten the Courier Journal. My subscription's about to get canceled. I mean, it's, it's a joke. <laughs> so I'm, when I say that I'm really like, I've spent more time thinking about that than us being number one in the country. <laughs> I promise you. It sounds like it. Don't even get me started on your uh, website. <laughs> like why they make you go through the app instead of just reading it on your phone. It, and one phone actually works that way, and the other one it demands that I go through the app. So I, yeah, I'm not real happy about that one either. <laughs> yeah. Can you answer another basketball question? <laughs> sure, if I get one. Uh, as far as Enoch's concerned, what do you expect out of him with his passing out of the post? Because He's got two assists in 138 minutes, which I don't know from your standpoint what that means. But uh. It's not Steve's role. It's not his job. You know, I think that uh, a lot of times when he's been doubled or he's been crowded in the post, he's made the really simple play. You know, he just kicked it out to the open man. And when he does that, a lot of times the ball will then get swung to the other side of the floor or it's driven because the kid, you know, has a bad closeout. You know, at times people are going to double off um, – you know, uh, less of a shooter than a guy like Ryan or Jordan. So when he sprays it out, you know, he might not be throwing it out to a 50% or 40% three-point shooter. But I'm not worried about Steven, you know, becoming Vlade Divac and trying to hit cutters and stuff. It's make the simple decision. And then offensively, I'm asking him to post as deep as he can in the lane, post in the charge circle, duck in right there. Um, you're, not, you're not getting doubled there. You can go up and get fouled. And so um, – 
you know, his assist turnover ratio isn't going to lead our team, um, and I don't really care. With Bassey being one of probably the, the better bigs that you're going to see this season, how do you think that Aiden is going to handle that, or are you planning on holding him out for any reason at the beginning? Um, well, I mean, we, there's two guys in front of him, you know, two guys that played an awful lot of minutes a year ago, and they're a lot more experienced. So if, uh, if Aiden gets his opportunity, um, he's got to do just like Malik and Steve do, and that is, you know, watch film, uh, get prepared through the drills that we do, uh, know that Bass is going to try to ride him up the lane. If he does a good job when the ball's on the wing, when the ball gets swung to the top of the key, he's going to try to, um, you know, lock and lob him and, and, and ride him up the lane. And so he's going to have to match that toughness level against, you know, one of the best bigs that we're going to play all year. Seems like his hands have gotten a little bit better over the past few games. That's good to hear. He's worked on it every single day. You know, he spends time with, um, you know, man, student managers. You know, Joey Gruden's throwing the ball against the wall. And, you know, Aiden's doing everything that he can to, um, you know, become a better catcher. And uh, I think it, they have improved and his confidence has improved with that. Oh, we looked at some of them, absolutely. Um, you know, I never had a chance to see Tavion. Um, you know, obviously he's a little bit older and I wasn't here. Um, but that, that was a guy that, yeah, we looked at for a little bit. We ended up getting, uh, I think, Paul Scruggs in that class. So, uh, you know, we always are going to try to look within a 100-mile radius of, of, you know, our school. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thank you.